Welcome back, Richard. It's good to see you. Hey, how are you? Um, end of the month again. Yes, it is. In fact, we're always at the end of the month, you know, for some reason. It's like, here yeah. we are again. Um, somebody pointed out that we're halfway to, almost halfway to the holidays. <laughs> so um, um, Miss Kathy will be keeping track of how many days, how many shopping days are left. And um, I, it's unbelievable. We're almost. I don't, I don't even want to imagine people already to keeping up with that. That's, that's, that's craziness, but. Well, you know, um, it's Memorial Day. So we start, have to get, start getting ready for the 4th of July, you know? So, I mean, let's, let's. Get these things in order so okay stores stores definitely help with that so as soon as one holiday is over they're they've already decorated for the next so <laughs> that's right they're they're having their summer clearance sale starting um next week i guess you know that's so. right okay well anyway it's, it's good to see you good to see you and and because it is the end of may we want to spend uh this last weekend talking about and, and kind of touching on a little bit related to uh, mental Health Awareness Month. May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And, you know, last week we talked about, um, you know, some of those things and some of those differences between, you know, authentic, true mental health conditions and, you know, maybe some of the dilemmas and challenges that we experience as part of the, the our normal life processes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, you, you said something the other day um, here, in, here in the hallways at PAC Florida. And, um, you know, just that, life is hard. And, and just because life is hard, doesn't necessarily mean that we have a mental health condition doesn't mean that we have a mental illness. It just means that yeah, um, there, there was never a promise that life was going to be easy. Um, right. Life is tough sometimes. That's right. Um, and we touched on that, as you said, we touched on that last week that life is hard, and that you're going to encounter disappointments and losses and failures and and illness and uh, all those things. It's part of life. Mm -hmm. And um, there, in, as we're, you know, going through the internet last week, this, this um, book title pops up and an article in a, in a um, organization called organization called medium. And um, it's, it was written by a philosophy professor at MIT yeah. and it sort of fit naturally and easily into the discussion that we had last week about life is hard. Um, don't, we, we shouldn't harbor this notion that, that, that life is supposed to be happy and that you're supposed to be happy all the time. But in these days of social media, social media saturation, mm -hmm. um, there's this notion that everyone else is happy and having fun and celebrating events and eating great food and great restaurants and, they're enjoying life with family and friends. That simply isn't true, okay? Um, that is, Facebook is fantasy. Uh, right. Social media is fantasy. There was a, a study published last week um, that was uh, was made pretty pretty widely available about the effect of social media right. on teens, another, another article about social media on teens. And, and th that certainly is the case for teens and adults, is that what we see on social media is not real life. It's like Avatar, you know. It's 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 not real, um, and so in these days of social media saturation, we have to be careful that we don't think that's real life. That's that's fantasy. And this this philosopher, his name is Kieran Sataya, um, teaches philosophy at MIT, and the title of his book is "Life Is Hard: How Philosophy Can Help Us Find Our Way," and. When we talk about life being hard, it is true that at every phase of development, we face challenges. You can go back to infancy. Infants face challenges that have to be satisfied by nurturing caregivers. They, right. they get cold, they get wet, they get hungry, they, have, they feel pain. Those are the challenges of an infant. Right. Toddlers have their own challenges. Teenagers have their challenges. Newlyweds have challenges. Parents have challenges and the elderly have challenges. So there's never a there's never a phase in your life where you're not going to be facing some kind of challenge, some kind of hardship. Yeah, it, it happens throughout. And you know, sometimes the the challenges we work to avoid at one stage in life actually comes back to bite us at another stage in life. Um, right. You know, we say that to 
uh, teenagers a lot, for example, you, at some point in your life, you're going to really work hard. You're either going to work hard academically and you, to do well in school so that you can, you know, have mm-hmm. uh, a job that doesn't maybe require as much physical um, work, right. or, or you're mm-hmm. going to take it easy during those times. And, um, you know, you may end up having uh, work where you're going to be more physical and you're going to, you know, maybe not be able to do the type of stuff that you want to do because um, you, you're not working, you didn't work earlier, you know, so there, there's this, there's this give and take that happens, but yeah, there's, there's always um, a struggle and we, we have to avoid the tendency. And, and I think that this is happening more and more often right now, maybe for a variety of reasons, but people tend to find themselves just wallowing in, right. in grief and agony and fear and and failure and all kinds of different, you know, what we what many would refer to as negative experiences. Right. Um, unless there's something like wonderful happening in their life, so many people are just finding ways to to wallow and to um, you know, woe is me so often because of something challenging in their life. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this this notion that we are just intended to be naturally happy all the time and that things are supposed to just go smooth and great all the time is a bit of a a, a false pretense to life you, you know there's nothing that ever said parents will say this to kids sometimes you know when they say that you know it's not fair they'll say well you know life isn't fair okay. um but right. at the same time then the you know the parents may be the same ones that are then wallowing in some of this you know woe is me that oh how tough things are mm-hmm but you know, life life is tough. That's right. Yeah. This this notion that you know my that um, life is so hard. We we have to avoid we have to avoid the temptation to um, to give in to surrender. That that my life is so difficult. Or you know, we see this with teenagers, and they'll come in and they'll say, "Well, I'm just not happy." You know, or or adults will come in and say, "Well, I'm just not happy." Um, well, first of all, you're not supposed to be happy. Okay, that's that's not the goal. The goal is not to be happy. When I hear people say, I'm just not happy, I think my first thought is, I think you're talking about Facebook happy or social media, Snapchat happy or Instagram happy. Okay, there's this picture you have in your mind of what it means to be happy. What, what, that's I, not the objective. Right. But, but I, and I think that what happens is that people say that they're not happy, but then at the same time, they're not doing anything to address exactly what they feel unhappy about. That's right. know, it's one thing to be unhappy in a relationship. You know, mm-hmm. there, there's something, there are things that you can do to address mm-hmm. that. That's um, right. But instead what people do is they, they, again, kind of wallow, they complain about being mm-hmm. unhappy, but right. they just stay sedentary. They stay stuck exactly where they are. And, and they're not, then doing anything about it. And then it starts to lead to this learned helplessness and this um, Mm -hmm, self-defeating perspective. But, you know, our our species, uh, you know, humans have the potential of being very resilient. Right. Um, right. But yet, but you can't do that if you just stay stuck where you are. Exactly. People, especially teenagers who are struggling with so many things, um, none of us would ever want to go back to our teenage years because those are those are tough years there's a, that transition is tough but there's this notion that happiness is something that just comes into me you know that that it's brought to me by somewhere else that i'm supposed to just grow happiness like a mushroom um or that i have to affiliate i have to associate with certain kinds of people and they'll make happiness happen for me that i can find happiness somewhere or that happiness will simply emerge automatically from my body. That isn't, that's, that's an unrealistic, un, that's not true. That's not how this works. Um, so, so because that isn't happening, then people tend to say, oh, my life is, I'm a failure. My life is bad and I'm, you know, the grief and the fear and the agony. But that's, that kind of happiness isn't going to happen. What we're talking about here is that as we go through different phases of our lives, we have to be able to deal with the inevitable challenges that are going to confront us. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Once we get to the preschool, uh, kindergarten, first, second, third grade, we have to start learning how to manage these yeah. things. And the studies that have been done have been done in the elderly. And, and people will, will do studies with the elderly and say, why are you happy? You know, you're 85 years old, you have chronic pain, but you seem to be doing okay. And the conclusion from the studies in the elderly is that people develop over their over time, they develop the ability to manage the challenges. Mm -hmm. And they call that ability resilience. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, it, and it's not something that just happens. It right. you know, it's it, not it's like not, a personality trait. Right. It doesn't mm -hmm. just spond again, it doesn't just spontaneously, you know, formulate. It doesn't spontaneously mm -hmm. create. We we have to cultivate it. We have to That's develop right. it over time. And and the way that we do that is by experiencing tough times. It, it's like, you know, to to build up your muscles in your body, you have to put strain and pressure and, and force against those muscles. Mm -hmm. and, and the more that you do that, the stronger those muscles get. Resilience That's is right. very very similar in that the more you you you're struggling, the more that you experience some of those things, the stronger you can build and, and the more likely you can build some of this resi resilience. Right. It doesn't help if we avoid conflict, yeah. if we avoid right. disappointments and failures. Avoiding that stuff isn't the key. The key is facing it, dealing with it, and moving on and keeping, you know, con to continue trying and con to continue working. Yeah. You know, parents, parents want to rate, they want to give their children these abilities to, to manage life. Okay. Well, one of the abilities that your child, one of the abilities that you have to foster in your children is resilience, the, the ability to manage and to handle our difficulties. I think I like your muscle. I like your weightlifting analogy that you, you build muscle by challenging, by, by putting stress on those muscles. Um, if you never do that, you're never going to develop the muscles. If you don't move against gravity, if you don't lift weights, if you don't do something, if you don't stay active, your joints are going to atrophy, your muscles are going to be weak. It's, it's the same with resilience. So the worst thing that parents can do is to protect their children from disappointment to protect their children from hardship. No, your children have to, we've said it many times in these podcasts, your children have to experience failure. Mm -hmm. they, if they don't experience it, it, they're never going to learn to deal with it. Yeah. And so the worst thing you can do is, is program your children so that they only experience success because you're denying them the opportunity to learn how to manage life challenges. And believe me, they're going to experience life challenges. No matter what, how much money you have, no matter how you clear the path for them, they are going to experience life challenges. You cannot escape it. So the best thing we can do is prepare, is, is to help our children develop resilience by putting them in situations that are situations that are challenging and where they uh, occasionally encounter failure. Absolutely. And that applies to adults as well. Mm -hmm. You know, if you deny that you're having a problem, if you don't face your hardships if you don't face them directly, just stare them down, you're not going to develop the resilience that you need. If you deny them or if you avoid them, you're not going to you're going to deny yourself the opportunity to develop this extremely important quality of resilience. A absolutely. So so if we think about what resilience is, right? Mm -hmm. It is it is sort of the ability to bounce back or or to move on um, after experiencing challenging events or or, or bad circumstances. And, and it's uh, uh, the ability to adapt and to um, face some of these challenges and adversities mm -hmm. um, and, and again, work through them, um, experience them and, and then come through to the other side and with a with sort of a new perspective, uh, a, a new experience that you've had that's going to then inform the next time you right. experience things. You know, we, we mm -hmm. do this very often therapeutically when you're working with someone who has gone through maybe a, a bad breakup or a, just a bad experience in life, we talk about, you know, okay, what can we take from that relationship or that experience that's going to inform us so that the next time we're in a relationship, we can anticipate um, some of these things, or we can, you know, prevent some of these negative things from happening. But mm -hmm. 
that's how you build resilience as you go through those a- adversities and come through the other side growing. Right. Right. There, there's this idea of we, we talk a lot of times about post-traumatic stress disorder. Yeah. Um, but this this new phrase that's coming about now is post-traumatic stress, uh, post-traumatic growth, where after a, tra- a trauma or a tragedy, growing afterwards. And that, yeah. that's sort of the resilience side of, of um, growing through uh, adversity. That's right. Um, the whole uh, notion of exposure therapy, that you know, if you, you want to get over it, you have to do that. Well, when you grow resilience, there's sort of two um, sort of overarching or broad uh, principles, two guiding principles. And one of them is that bad times provide opportunities. Right. Um, they, they don't have, bad times are inevitable, but they don't have to define or confine Right. Or constrain us in any way. If you look at them as opportunities to grow and become more resilient, for example, uh, during the Blitzkrieg in uh, London during World War II, yeah. um, mental health professionals thought there would be this flood of, of uh, traumatized people rushing to emergency rooms. It didn't happen because people uh, supported each other and developed resilience mm-hmm. to that to that tragedy, even though thousands of people died. Um and so we know from events like that, natural disasters, wars, that people can take those opportunities and become more resilient. When patients come into our office and they're struggling with life events, I don't want to relieve you of the stress. I don't want to, I don't want you to ignore it. I'm not going to encourage you to ignore right. what's happening. Right. I'm going to encourage you to confront it. What we can do together is confront those challenges and help you learn to deal with them. Because in dealing with it successfully, then the next time it happens, and there will be a next time, mm-hmm. you will have the confidence to know that you can get through it. Um, a romantic breakup is yeah. catastrophic the first time it happens. Mm-hmm. But most of us have had more than one romantic breakup. And right. so you learn that over time, you will feel better. You will manage this and you will move forward. But the only reason that that hap- the only way that happens is you have to experience it and you have to confront it and you have to deal with it to develop the confidence and the, the confidence that I have the ability to move forward. A- absolutely. And that's a... A, a sort of a staple of the therapeutic approach that we take with a lot of um, with, with a lot of people because of mm-hmm. the importance of those experiences. You right. know, again, as you mentioned earlier, we, we've talked about multiple times on this podcast. Is you know, sometimes a kid needs to experience an F on a on a report card. Mm-hmm. You know, that experience right. can, um, can have lasting effects in a positive right. way. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to, you know, it's going to crash their their self esteem and they're, you know, never going to be able to recover. What it what it could mean and should mean is that, well, my actions have a consequence, and so right. next time I'm in this situation, this is what I can do, and and I can make better decisions along the way so that I don't have to experience this again. Right. You know that whole idea that well, I got an F, but it's the teacher's fault. I right. got an F, but my teacher's a jerk. I got an F, but I, no, you got an F. How is this going to, how how do we use that experience to make you more resilient, to make you better, to, to provide you, take the F because it's an opportunity to grow, to right. develop, to become, okay? That's what you have to do. So that's one thing. Bad times provide opportunities. The second thing is something called value pluralism. Um, Satya uses the word value pluralism. No matter how bad things are, we find that there's always something that can that we can look at and say, I'm joyful about this. You, you go through bad times. But if you have children in your life, if you have a partner in your life, yeah, you might be having financial problems, but you have this partner who cares about you. There's right. always something. So our life is in segments. It's in pieces. And this piece might be out of focus, but these pieces aren't. Right. And so you value what is good in your life. Right. Yeah. There, there, um, you know, the, the idea, uh, one of the ideas of pluralism is that, you know, 
is, is plural. There's multiple, there's many. And, and we get so one dimensional sometimes when we're, when we're struggling with something and, and right. the, that, that struggle is the only thing that we see. And, and we become, you know, that, the whole idea of tunnel vision and we, we can't see anything else that's happening in our life. And, mm -hmm. You, you know, again, when you're working with, when we're working with couples, or we're working with family systems, or, you know, even with just an individual, the idea of, of looking at what's going well, mm -hmm. can help provide some of that strength, some of that support that, okay, you know, my world isn't completely crashing. It's just this one area that I'm having a hard time. Right. And again, this builds that resilience, because it says, you know, hey, you're holding every, you're holding, you know, 80% of your life together very, very well. Exactly. To focus right. on this part over here to, right. to, to strengthen it. And, and that can help people gain so much confidence and, and mm -hmm. support. Right. And so so how do we develop this? How do you how do you build how do you build the um the psychological toolbox that you need to manage your life? I mentioned earlier the the studies with the elderly. And right. what we learned about the elderly is people who have more resilience tend to be have a higher educational level they tend to have better health and they have um, a social support network okay so those are the, those seem to be the the three qualities that we want to develop so how do you nurture resilience well you you accomplish those three things right so the first step and we're going to talk about two of these is um, consider your worldview. Right. Um, if you have a worldview, life is always good, you know, that you have this, uh, it's always good. Um, you're going to, your assumptions are going to be shattered because you're going to encounter things yeah. that, um, that are not um, good, that the, you know, the, we use the term Pollyanna, you know, she's right. being Pollyanna, like it's always good. No, life is not always good. Um, or you take the world is dangerous view, okay? Right. I live in this dangerous world. Well, then you're going to be under constant anxiety and stress. Okay. Yeah. So, so you have to find this middle ground. Yeah. You, you have to find the Goldilocks because, you know, you see the people who only anticipate the positive and then they get blindsided when, right. when right. something you're wrong happens and you they get T-boned by life. You know? I, absolutely. And they have absolutely no idea how to manage it. Mm -hmm. But then you have those others who only anticipate the negative, so the the eternal pessimist, and right. and they find something wrong with everything. And sure enough, they, the world is bad. They, they win right. the they win the lottery, and then they're complaining about the num amount of taxes they have to pay on it. And, right. and it's you know there's there are there is some positive, and so that that Goldilocks happy medium is recognizing that life life is generally good. It really is Some things right. that happen and that we can adapt and adjust and, and cope with those bad things. Right. But generally life is life is pretty good. Life is what we can what we make it. That's um, right. You know, within within some boundaries, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but but we have to accept the good and the, and the bad with things. That's right. You, you can't go through life saying everything's great because as soon as something bad happens, your world falls apart. You're, it's, right. you're shattered. You have no ability to deal with it. You weren't expecting it. No, I want you to expect that some bad things are going to happen to you. So let's get ready. Let's prepare. Okay. Yeah. So what are the four components that we're going to build? Well, we said education, mm -hmm. health, and social supports. Okay. Yeah. So what are the four components uh, that we have to build? Well, one of them is you have to have meaning or purpose in your life. Right. Yeah. There are people today who life to them is what can I buy? How can I have fun? Where can I go to vacation? Um, what am I going to do this weekend? Um, what are other people buying? How can I buy this stuff? How can I get this stuff? That's not meaning or purpose. Okay? Right. You have to have some, some purpose, some reason to get out of bed every morning. Okay. Right. And again, that doesn't hit you like a lightning bolt. That's something that you have to go out and discover. What's important to me? What do I want to do with my life that will sustain me day in and day out? Right. Yeah. And this is the, you know, people often talk about that. What, what is the purpose? What is the meaning of life? And 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 you, we hear the, those kinds of questions oftentimes from people who are depressed and who are struggling with, with those kinds of things. But the, the, the pur your purpose is your purpose you, you you find that purpose you find that goal that that right. mission you know for for most of us that mission is just to to find 
um, ways to be better, um, to be a better person, to be a better partner, to be a better parent, better child, um, mm -hmm. you know, is to just continue to improve. Right. Um, now, that can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but you, you have to find your, your meaning. And, and part of that, because of the, 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 the nature of the human experience, part of that is finding a connection with other people. Right. That's we right. are not meant to be socially isolated. We are, we are not so individualistic that we, mm -hmm. you know, we can live um, on our own away and apart from everyone else. We, we have to have those connections and social relationships with other people, and we need to foster that. Right. Um, I remember that line from <laughs> there's a moot tombstone where Doc Holliday is going to go out and do this, all this dangerous stuff with Wyatt Earp. And those guys said, well, hell, you know, and he's big, I'm going to do it because he's my friend. And the other guy said, well, hell, Doc, we all have friends. And Doc Holliday said, I don't. Right. This is, you know, that was his support system. And he would put he would risk his life for his friend. Right. Um, and, and so we need to have a support system. You right. need to be developing that. There's no advantage in being alone at any right. time in your life. Right. There's no advantage of being alone. But that doesn't happen automatically. You right. have to go out and nurture it. Okay. Right. It's the same with healthy thinking and healthy body. You have to have a healthy mind and a healthy body. You right. have to think about your strong points and your weak points and right. You know, you have to develop, you have to accept diverse perspectives. You have to listen and respect other people's opinions. You have to regulate your emotions. Right. You have to practice pro-social behaviors. Do all the things you can do to have a healthy mind, to, to have healthy thinking. Right. Yeah. And um, you, you have to, I, I'm distracted because as you were saying some of those, those things, it made me think of some of the some of the things happening here in Florida that oh. is negatively affecting all of that <laughs> because you know th th because this is social emotional learning right mm -hmm. this is understanding what you're feeling what you're experiencing what your how your internal world is connecting and interacting with your external world and and that connection is critically important. Um, if they can't connect or if they if your internal world just doesn't mesh with your outside world you're going to experience a lot of distress right. and so you you have to be able to you know look within we talked about that last week look within and 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 look with look outside of you um, outside right. of yourself and see how you're fitting into your world and addressing things that aren't going well you know right. Do something about those things, and and then acknowledging and enjoying those things that are going well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we we spend a lot of time <clears throat> looking at how other people behave and what other people mm -hmm. are doing, but we do have to take a little bit of time to reflect on what we're thinking and what we're doing, right. um, and we don't do that nearly enough. Uh, so engaging in things like mindful medita mindfulness meditation and you know just sitting with yourself and thinking mm -hmm. about your thinking um thinking about what is going on inside you that is a critical part of building resilience and, and finding you know some life satisfaction right you know there was a there was a line that he uses um that i i would ask people to really think about uh, deeply carefully and deeply and and to have healthy thinking you want to gain wisdom you know we we hear about the tibetan monks and they're always seeking wisdom what do they mean by seeking wisdom um our th and and this is the part that i would that i want you to think about thoughts and feelings are not your reality the reality right. is what's occurring in in your world okay the good the bad the ugly Thoughts and feelings are not your reality. They're simply a story that you tell yourself. Right. And we talk all the time. We tell people all the time. You've written a certain narrative about you. Okay. Is it accurate? Is it an accurate narrative? Because you can rewrite your narrative. Yeah. Okay. You, you don't have to accept the narrative that has occurred or that you built. Right. You can rewrite that narrative. Okay. Thoughts and feelings are not reality. Right. They're simply the story that you tell yourself. And you can always rewrite that story. 
Right. So we want to have healthy thinking, but we also want to have a healthy body. Right. And how many times have we talked about sleep, nutrition, and movement? Absolutely. There's there's good back to the the that basic three things that we have to focus on of, of That's right. making sure that we're getting enough sleep, making sure that we're eating well and exercise and, and do all those things. So, you know, we have we have we have actually multiple podcasts in the past about the just those three, the importance of those three things. Yeah. If you want to handle life challenges, you have to put forth this effort to build resistance, mental and physical. Okay? That's that's your obligation. So to sort of pull all this back together, um, we begin with conflict, hardship, agony. Those are inevitable. You're not going to escape them. Okay. But how you react to them, you can do something about. You, you can't avoid the problems, but you can control how you react to them, how you prepare. Okay? Absolutely. And you're and and the way that you react to them and what you do as a result of running into those hardships and those difficulties. That is where you're building re resilience. Right. Uh, you, you don't build resilience by avoiding those things. Exactly. You build resilience by confronting those things, managing those things, coping with those things, and then moving on um, to continue to grow. That's uh, right. Yeah, because resilience doesn't come from running away or avoiding or denying. You face it. You look it straight in the eye. You got to look at these monsters. Yeah, and you got to look at them and face them openly and honestly. I want you to have that feeling because unless you have that feeling and you confront that feeling face to face, you're not going to be able to deal. You're not going to overcome it. You're going to run away from it and you cannot run away from it. You have to confront it and you will learn over time how to conquer those, those how to manage, conquer, overcome the hardships that are inevitable. Yeah, because you know you, the world that you live in is the world that you live in. And, and we can't live a life where we are longing for a life that we don't have. You know, right. you, you have to live a life and make the life that you want. Right. By, by, but that takes work. That takes building resilience. That takes going through hardships and difficult times and coming through stronger and better and more determined to get to your destination. Right. Um, you know, a lot of people live in a, their, their lives in anticipation of something that isn't um you know and we have to mm -hmm. to to change that we have to change the way that we're thinking in those ways so. right yeah the navy seals have that ring the bell you know when you when you want to give up if yeah. it's too much you want to get you ring the bell yeah. and we're told never ever ever ring the bell yeah. and what Sataya says in his book is don't blink yeah. I, I like that idea don't blink you live in the world that is not the world that you wished you had. And the world we live in is we're going to have, we're going to face hardship, but we have to build resilience so that we can manage that hardship. Absolutely. All right. That is it for today. I hope everyone had a good mental health awareness month and that you um, attended to your, your mental wellness and um, are, that you continue to focus on for the rest of the year. So and and do that this this holiday weekend. You know, um, take some time this holiday weekend to think about how can what can you do to build resistance so that you're better better able to manage life's hardships. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. that's it for today. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and forget to be afraid.